Hey, how's it going? It's your good friend Tom Van, and uh, welcome to the VSM Advantage video. All right, I came up with that name, and I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to stick with it, the VSM Advantage video. All right, so today I want to tell you um, what is going to be the most important thing, by the way, when it comes to making certain that you have the right selling job in our industry, right, in automotive, professional automotive selling. All right, now, this is critical. Right, because I've got so many people that I see that are that contact me and they say, Tom, I'm telling you, I think I'm getting hosed at the dealership I'm at. And I tell you, even managers tell me that, and of course, dealers tell me that because they think they're getting hosed by their staff members uh, plenty of times. You know, that's kind of funny, but but really, you know, the people on the front lines of dealerships, I mean, a lot of these people are going, Man, I, I don't think I can stay here, I don't think I want to. You know, because I'm not getting what it is I need, you know, opportunities and such. Well, I want to tell you the three things that you need to have to make certain that your career and the place that you're working at is going to be one that soars to the moon, right? Because you've got to be set in your head that this job is about setting you up and, and setting uh, your life up to have the things that you want, to live the life that you are meant to live, whatever that is, the impact that you want to make in your life. Right? I mean, the most important thing that you pick is the right place to work, right? So what's going to make that the right place to work, you know, and how do you pick dealerships? Well, I break it down to these three things. All right, are you ready? Are you surrounded by the right people? You got that? Number two, are you surrounded by the right opportunities? You see that? And number three, do you have the right compensation plan? All right, now I'm going to go into those just a little bit more so you get this. All right, when it comes to the right people, well, who are the right people? All right, the right people are the ones that, that from a supervisory standpoint, they support autonomy above micromanagement. All right, whew, I'm telling you, man, there's some dealership out there that, dealerships out there that are so focused on micromanaging their people that they don't want their people to breathe unless it's somehow marked down and they know that they've breathed more than this guy over here. I mean, it sounds insane, but, but so many dealers, what they believe is that if they can manage every moment of a salesperson's life and livelihood, that somehow they will be able to maximize it for that salesperson, for you. I'm telling you what, it'll never work. Will it work for you? If you're micromanaged so much that, that someone's telling you, hey, Tom, I did notice that through that last 10 minutes, you picked up your pencil just three times, man, and you know you got to pick it up at least five times to work here. I mean, it's just insane. And I'm telling you, people are, are they're that nuts sometimes. So you got to make sure you have the right people. And part of being the right people are the people that, again, what they want for their staff members is to give them more autonomy and less management time, right? Now, in fairness to them, you've got to make certain that you earn it, right? If you're just, you know, a lazy, you know, knuckle skitter, you know, it's not going to work, man, and you might as well get out of the career anyway. It's not for you, all right? But if you are one where you've got the passion, you've got the drive inside, you just need the knowledge, you've got talents, you just need more skills to make sure that you get this thing right, well, then you're the one, you're the player. Right, so you gotta make sure that you get that out. Fair enough, so that happens in the right people. The second thing about the right people is they have to be people that you enjoy being around. Makes sense, doesn't it? You cannot go in to your work every single day and think to yourself, I hate these people, man, they're jerks and they're liars and they treat people like crap and they talk badly about their clients and, and they sexually harass people that you work around or you or something, you go, man, you got to get out of that. Don't be near it because you don't have to be, all right? You're worth more than that, man. You see, so we got to start by going, we got to be around the right people. Now, the next thing is we got to be around the right opportunities, all right? So you've got to make sure that you make this, this, and it's not just a judgment call, it's observations, right? It's not just opinions, it's sheer fact when you look at it. Now, the first thing I want you to look at is, do you have the right opportunities when it comes to inventory? Is that inventory being turned in a timely basis, right? Is it revolving? If you've got an inventory that's old and stale and it doesn't seem as though the, the management seems to care all that much about those, you gotta go, man. It's not going to work for you. You've got to have an inventory that's revolving constantly. So you have new stuff coming in and coming out. 
It's great for your clients, it's great for the dealership, it's great for you. Everybody wins. Everybody loses when the inventory just stays put and stays still. All right. The second thing about opportunities, you've got to make certain that you're able to sell both new and used vehicles. All right. Do not get stuck being just selling new or just selling used unless you only work in a used car store, then everything's fine, right? That's cool. It's cool to do that. And by the way, I am a big supporter of people that work at used car only stores. You've just got to make sure you pick the right store because, man, there's some shady, shady things that go on in some used car stores, right? And it happens in new car stores too. But I tell you, in used car stores, you've got to pick the right one. But if you're in a combination new and used car store, you have to be able to sell both. Now, why is that? Because the clients that you're going to bring to the table are going to be some that, that are in need or demand new vehicles and some that are in need or demand used, right? Because most people you know, have at least two vehicles in their, in their corral of vehicles, um, but a lot of people are sticking with about three, right? There's a couple adults, uh, uh, mom and dad, they've got their own. They got one for one of the kids, maybe two for uh, the kids or whatever. They split it up between two, three, four vehicles. A lot of those vehicles, they're not all going to be new, man. And if you're stuck selling new all the time, then you're going to get hosed when it comes to those people, your best clients that, that need used. All right. You're the client expert, right? The dealership you work with, they have to provide you with the opportunities to be able to fulfill the desires and the needs of your clients. You understand? Doesn't that make sense? Fantastic. Okay. Now, the third big thing here is what? Got to make sure you have the right compensation plan. All right. That's a big deal. So great compensation plans. All right. I'm not going to break out the structure of it. That's not what I mean. But yours will include the structure. I just can't give you one structure. It's going to work right for everybody because it absolutely won't. Depends on sometimes the Highline vehicles that you work with because there's some vehicles where, you know, you can make 10, 12, 14, $15,000 on per vehicle. But you just don't have the opportunities to sell as many vehicles, right? As say, if you're selling, you know, one of the mainstream brands of Toyota, uh, General Motors, Chrysler, whatever, Ford, right? So, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's not about picking the right things, right? It's, you know, picking the right, you know, brand and all that stuff. But it's understanding this is that your income per vehicle that you want to have, this compensation plan has to give you the opportunity to be able to make at least $500 compensation per vehicle that you sell. All right, now you might go, oh, holy crap, Tom, I can't do that. I go, now wait a minute. You might be on a compensation plan that does afford that, but it affords that for people who I consider the players or your dealership considers the players. And that's point number two when it comes to making certain you got the right comp plan. You want a comp plan that makes certain that it values the true players, the true sellers in your dealership because you are one of them. If you're not one of them, you're just you kind of float in there and you just believe that by showing up, you ought to get paid some extra dough and all that stuff. No, man, that is not really how it works in this world. It doesn't certainly work in, in westernized countries. It doesn't, right? Because, you know, we are, are people that we're responsible for us. And we're responsible for the opportunities that we create. And so we want to get compensated based upon our productivity. Not because we think, you know, uh, we just want a water line so it's safe. No, no, no. Not pros. Pros, we're not looking for safe, we're looking for opportunities, right? And we're looking for comp plans that say, I want the comp plan that says, I want people that, that are opportunity seekers, right? And that's what you need to be. That's what you want to be. And so we want a comp plan that's going to pay you at least $500 for every vehicle that you sell. Not if you're only selling six a month, no. You need to have a comp plan that pays you a solid amount per vehicle that you sell and that offers you bonus, strong bonus structures so that when you become a 15 car, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 car a month salesperson. And yeah, there's plenty of VSMers that are that, by the way, it's pretty cool. But let's say you're looking to be a 30 car a month salesperson, which is fantastic. You want to make certain that 30 cars you sell, by the time you're selling 30, you ought to be making $500 a car. 
right? That's 15 grand a month. I promise you you're worth that's $180,000 a year, 30 a, a year, right? And I'm not saying that you have to make exactly 500, you ought to be able to shoot that thing above $600 per vehicle. But a baseline 500 bucks, man, and that's if you gotta take a look at the math, by the time you're selling 15 vehicles a month, you ought to be at $500 per copy, per vehicle sold, compensation. If your compensation plan doesn't allow for that, get out. You got the wrong place. You got it? So those are the big three. And again, that second thing was you want one that compensates players. You got it? So anyway, I hope you dig it. This is Tom Van. I hope you like the VSM Advantage uh, tip that I just gave you. Hope you dig it and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Adios.